The back and forth between Ilya Tapuri and Bilal Muhammad continues. It started with Ilya saying this yesterday on Instagram Live. Bilal versus Shaukta. Shaukta. But Bilal, he's a, he's a fake champ. He's a fake. Fake. I think right now in the welterweight division, the one who, who will come back and will will take the belt again, it's, it's Kamaru Usman, in my opinion. Easy work for, for Usman. Bilal fired back on X. He wrote, didn't this dork just buy a fake BMF belt to pose with? He's starting to become the Georgian version of Colby Covington. Ilya fired back saying, Bilal crotch sniffer Muhammad. And Bilal fired back with this. He wrote, Ilya Diddy Taporia. Ilya then reposted this. It reads, Bilal is such a crybaby. He should have been cut from the UFC for this. Ilya wrote, no finishes, no knockouts, no knockdowns, no girlfriend, no kids. Bilal has never finished any man or woman. Bilal replied, now you're just copying stuff word for word off memes. Conor McGregor also went off on Bilal Muhammad once again today in a now deleted post on X. Conor wrote, I'd love to crush my left hook into Bilal's temple and take down the triple crown. I'd do it easily and fast. I'd cave his skull heavy. The hurdles I face getting back into the octagon are just harrowing. I'm so sad over my June 29th fight cancellation. To think this bum is now the UFC champion with zero knockdowns on his resume whatsoever is so bad. The UFC's most abysmal zero revenue generating fighter in modern history. Conor McGregor also offered to help Sean O'Malley get his belt back. He wrote, Sean is a fighting legend, UFC champion, and an incredible superstar. I would love, love, love to see, and I could set it up fully, himself and his longtime coach Tim Welch, do a stint in Ireland, a four-week run at SBG Ireland, under John's coaching, and I am telling you he would regain his title. He has a shot at regaining it still for sure, but for himself and also his coach to spend a good month to begin with, not a long time, but a good solid month under Coach Cav at SBG, and they would take heaps of knowledge back with them and onwards to regain the gold. I would love to see it. Ahead of his fight against Hayden Fajeda this weekend at PFL Super Fights, Francis Ngannou tries on the PFL gloves for the first time. Hamza Chamaev's training partner posted footage of him preparing for Robert Whitaker. Hamza versus Rob goes down at UFC 308 on October 26th. <laughs> Jorge Masvidal does not think Conor McGregor will ever fight again. Speaking to MMAfighting.com, Jorge said, we'll see him at a bar and shit. Are you talking about in the cage? Like as an official or to be judges? You mean fighting? I don't think so. I hope he proves me wrong, but I don't think so. Conor under no circumstances is fighting me. He's backed out of fighting Chandler. Poor little Chandler. I don't know how many times he's let that dude eat dust. Imagine me. That guy is never fighting me. He can't do enough to f***ing get jacked up to fight me. On fighting Michael Chandler, Jorge continued that wouldn't be a bad fight to get my feet wet again with MMA. Kind of an introductory course to MMA. I wouldn't mind that fight, but there's a lot of fights that I would take. I was just throwing that one out there. You can't sit in silence forever. Let's go. You want to throw down with one of the most f***ing electrifying mother f that ever touched the sport? Let's f***ing go. Kai Asakura was just recently signed to the UFC and will debut against Alessandri Pantoja for the belt at UFC 310. Footage is going around today of Kai sparring Marab Devalashvili. Let me know what you guys think in the comments.
Raquel Pennington expresses her frustration with the judges at UFC 307. Raquel lost her belt in a controversial split decision to Juliana Pena. She says that even Dana White and Joe Rogan thought she won. Speaking to MMAfighting.com, she said when it comes to these judges, they need to make it very clear because a lot of them say that the damaging shots are what's scoring. I had the damaging shots in the first round and it just gets frustrating. It gets frustrating from just being a competitor and the athlete in that situation, but not even just my fight. I have no idea what the judges were seeing that night in general. I even feel bad for Jose Aldo. His fight was the same thing. It's just crazy to me what these judges do. And at the end of the day, you have competitive fights. They go to the decisions, and it just takes that one person to take away everything from somebody. And I feel like they just really don't realize what they're doing, and yet they're the ones with the best seats in the house. They're the ones that are supposed to be doing the best job. And it's crazy to me how every single media outlet, like there wasn't even one that said Pena won. It was every single media outlet that said Pennington. I've had numerous top athletes reach out to me. I've had Dana White, freaking Hunter Campbell, Joe Rogan, John Anik, Daniel Cormier, everybody who's sitting right there and everybody is just like, no way, we don't understand this. Nobody understood it. I didn't understand it. They had my family lined up ready to come in there. And then when they announced it, they were like, is Bruce playing a joke here? It was all really weird but I wasn't the only athlete on that card that situations happened to. And you'll see it happen in multiple other events. It's honestly just sad. There should be different qualifications or something for these judges. Terrence Crawford sends a message to Conor McGregor while training wrestling. We ain't here working. Get back on the mat. Get back on the mat. Get back on the mat. Hey, Conor, get back on the mat. Stay tuned, baby. Stay tuned. Daniel Rodriguez is relieved to have snapped his three-fight losing streak over the weekend. D-Rod defeated Alex Morono via split decision. Speaking to media, D-Rod said, I worked so hard for this fight for so long, you know. It feels great to be back in the win column. I feel like this fight went a little tougher than I expected to, but hats off to him. He did a great job, and he was trying to knock my head off in that first round. I knew he was going to gas out but I just stayed composed and used my veteran skills. I hear that the UFC is coming to Los Angeles in January, and me being an LA hometown boy, I feel like it's only right for them to put me on the card. So please UFC, put me on LA. Alex Bejeda posted footage of his two sons sparring today, and the MMA community was quick to point out how they fight exactly like him. Quando o Jesus dá umas pegadas no Alessandro, porque ele começa a filmar e começa a bater forte. Umar Nurmagomedov believes Marab Davalashvili is avoiding him. Speaking to Kevin Ioli, Umar said they're both not very good. O'Malley is a bum in MMA, like he doesn't have any grappling or wrestling, and he didn't even try to fight him. He's just waiting and running away. He fights like a bum. You can't beat him when you're running. Now, Marab is trying to avoid saying my name, trying to tell me that I don't deserve the title shot. If the UFC asked him to fight me or someone else, I think he picks someone else 100 times out of 100. He's playing games. They know that I will not fight in Ramadan, and they're telling us how they're going to fight in March, when March is all Ramadan. It's looking very bad. It's looking like he's trying to avoid me, like he is scared. Tom Aspinall fired back at John Jones recently saying that he would never win more championships than him. Speaking to Ariel Hawani today, Tom said the guy is a little bit weird to me. I don't know. There's been some stuff he's done over the years that isn't normal behavior. I don't want to win as many championships as him. I just want to be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. I don't care. I want to make as much money as I can in the shortest amount of time possible and then bounce, do something else. I want to get out of this sport healthy. So once I'm done what I want to do, I've got no interest in being the best heavyweight ever, fighting until my 40s, no interest in it. Drikas Duplessis had words for Alex Pejeda, Bilal Muhammad, and Hamzat Chamayev today. First, Bilal. Drikas responded to Ilya Tapuria's post with laughing crying emojis. This user replied, Drikas, can you join the party and roast Bilal too? Drikas said, I would, but my boy Ilya said it all perfectly. Then this user posted a gif of Alex Pejeda. It says, don't run, Drikas. 
Drikus replied, I'm not. He didn't want to offend the BF, meaning Sean Strickland. So he said he didn't want to fight me. I'll give him my whole purse if he takes the fight. And for Hamzat, this user wrote, you will beat Strickland. After that, you gotta give the belt up to Hamzat or Whitaker. Drikus replied, only thing I'll give Hamzat is a visit to the sick kids ward. This user replied, Hamzat owns you. Don't disrespect King like that. And Drikus said, the king of coughing. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from the unusual dispenser 9474. It says, John Jones, protect your brain. Also, John Jones slams his head into a police car. The second one says, Juliana Pena is MMA's annoying little sister. And the final one's from Math Prodigy. It's in reference to Jared Cannonier saying that his fight against Anderson Silva was the easiest performance of his career. It says Silva that fought Cannonier was like 42, post-career ending leg surgery, and just giving these guys opportunities for charity at that point. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.